Welcome everybody. Hope you're doing well. This has sort of been like an adjustment week in this presidential campaign. Things were kind of chugging along in their own unusual way, admittedly, up until a few weeks ago. And then we had Joe Biden's debate performance. We had the subsequent assassination attempt of Donald Trump, Joe Biden getting covid, Joe Biden announcing he would not seek reelection. Kamala Harris securing the delegates to be the nominee, and then the subsequent powerful triggering of MAGA world, either because of how Kamala Harris laughs or the fact that she's not white and by definition she must be unqualified to be where she is, which they refer to with the code. She's a DEI candidate. And OK, so we're kind of letting things adjust. We're waiting for new polling, which next week will probably give us a little bit of a more accurate sense of is there as much voting enthusiasm behind Kamala Harris as there appears to be from the record setting uh, financial donations. A lot of these questions are in flux. We're hoping to get answers soon. But one of the really interesting interjections into this is that aside from the insults that we hear talking to Trump supporters at a Trump rally, we are starting to get some focus group clips and MSNBC sat down with some female Trump voters. Now, how do I say this? I've already received a bunch of emails from people about this focus group segment. Um, and there were unfortunately a lot of reactions from people in the audience based on the kind of physical characteristics of these women. Stuff like, gee, I wonder why they don't relate to Kamala Harris. Yes, the, the women are all white, I believe, but also stuff about the weight of the women and all these ex kind of extraneous things. Let's put all of that aside for the time being and focus in on the fact that while these are hardcore committed Trump voters, they all seem to recognize that Kamala Harris replacing Joe Biden does threaten Trump. It does bring energy. It is generating excitement. They are admitting it. And that's as powerful a sign as any that there may be something to this. OK, so let's listen. MSNBC focus group with female Trump voters weighing in on Kamala Harris as the nominee. Vice President Kamala Harris as the nominee dramatically changes. Donald Trump's odds of winning. I'm worried about it. Yeah, yes. I think she's going to go for the minority and female and young, younger voters. Progressive. Everybody's excited about her. Right. And that scares me. Right. You know, because uh, Trump has to reconfigure yep. where he's going and how they're going to um, outsmart her. Now, well, there's more of this. The idea that Trump has to reconfigure is very much linked to the new questions about, damn it, was J.D. Vance really the right choice? We've endorsed J.P., right? J.D. Mandel. Is he the right choice? Because sure, he's a doormat for Trump, but especially now in the context of Trump's the oldest nominee in American history and Trump's brain is increasingly glitching, as we saw yesterday. What does J.D. Vance really bring in the contrast of Kamala Harris, who is more charismatic than J.D. Vance, who if OK, so the reconfiguring that this woman is referring to is part of what what is going on. And also the fact that Trump and Republicans spent all of last week at the RNC running against Joe Biden and he's no longer the person who's running and it was sort of a waste of time. How do you perceive Vice President Harris compared to President Biden in terms of competency and experience? I think she's worse. She doesn't even know what's going on at the border. Right. <laughs> So this is where the hyper partisanship comes through. And that's what she was, she was supposed to be, to be doing, doing and then charge them. I mean, as a school teacher, if I did not. Oh, my goodness. Imagine that this is your kids, your kids teacher. Dear God, do what I was supposed to be doing. Okay. You better believe my job would be in jeopardy. Well, <clears throat> it isn't it. Not only was her job not in jeopardy, she was just handed a promotion. Is there anyone that Kamala Harris could appoint as her vice president that you would find reassuring? Would make you consider voting for her? Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. I've never considered voting for her. No, no, no. 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 
I would know RFK Jr. way before yeah. her. There you go. I would vote RFK Jr. way before her, which, by the way, by the way, there is growing pressure now from MAGA world to get RFK Jr. out in this new context where support really there were a bunch of people not happy with Biden that were kind of ambivalent and they were sort of reluctantly considering RFK a large swath of that now in the absence of Biden with Kamala Harris as the presumptive nominee have said, you know what? The obvious right thing here is let's go with Harris. I'm not going to dilly dally and consider this uh, uh, RFK stuff any longer. But it's funny that the woman says I'd consider RFK before Kamala Harris. So what's the takeaway? The takeaway is these are women who have been targeted by weaponized propaganda and disinformation. They've fallen hook, line and sinker for all of it. And yet they recognize Kamala Harris brings energy. Kamala Harris shakes up the race in such a way that Donald Trump has to realign and recon reconfigure the way that he is going to run this race. And if we which I agree with completely. Everybody is recognizing that now, whether you can carry that forward into a successful campaign, whether we get to debates where that dynamic becomes much more visible. Trump has agreed to debates, although it seems like it would be really stupid for Trump to debate Kamala Harris. Hard to imagine that that would go particularly well for Trump. The key takeaway, Trump women voters admit Kamala Harris is far greater a threat to Trump than was President Joe Biden. I often struggle to find a good pair of socks that fits right and is comfortable. Our sponsor Strideline have developed the most comfortable socks on earth. They have it trademarked and it's true. They really are that comfortable. I love my Strideline socks. Strideline has spent years developing extraordinarily comfortable, functional socks that you just have to try to understand. Every stride line sock gives you zoned cushioning, direct compression with a contour fit and hydrophobic moisture wicking to prevent the rubbing and the smells. Stride line is also officially a partner of the NFL, MLB, NCAA and Major League Soccer. So stride line is where you can go to keep your feet warm on game day. I picked up these awesome New England Patriot socks, even though the Patriots are OK. Anyway, I also love Strideline because they offer socks made from recycled plastic bottles that come out of the ocean so you can make your feet and the earth more comfortable. And Strideline supports what we do at The David Pakman Show. Another great reason to support them. Go enhance your comfort with a 20 percent discount only for The David Pakman Show. No other show is getting this discount. Use code Pacman for 20 percent off at stridelinecom The link is down below.